Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'll explain the procedure to create this particular two-dimensional figure using AutoCAD. When you look at this figure, you can see that it is basically made up of three polygons. We have a square, we have an octagon and a square. So let's start with the polygon command. So I'll click on the polygon command. When I'm asked to give the number of sides, I'll give four. Since four is the default, I'll just give an enter. Now it will ask you to select the center, but I'm not going to specify the center of the polygon, but instead I'm going to make use of the edge option. So click on edge option. Now it will ask you to select the first endpoint of the edge. I clicked it here. Now it will ask you to pick the second endpoint of the edge. So I'll activate the ortho mode. Now I'll keep the cursor in the rightward direction and I'll type the distance of four. Now this distance is four. Now we have got a square, but limit is not properly set. So it is hardly visible. So just double tap the scroll wheel of the mouse to get the zoom extends. Means the maximum possible magnification. You can just zoom out a bit to get a proper limit. Next I'll indicate the center of this square. Now I'm going to plot a point right at the center of the square. And I'll be using this point to create the rest of the polygons. You can plot a point right at the center using the geometric center option. In 2016 and higher versions, we have a geometric center option in the OSNAP menu. So let's plot such a point. I'll give the command PO for point. When I'm asked to specify a point, I'll just shift and right click and click on geometric center and just pick a point over here. Now it has plotted a point. Okay, this is just a dot. If you want, you can change the representation of the point using the p-type command. Now I'll give this representation. But if you're working in lower versions, then you can plot the same point using the tracking. So I'll go to point again. When I master select the point, you can keep the cursor over here and you can keep it over here. And when you come to this point, it is tracked perfectly. Now just click to define that point. Next, I'll create this octagon. So I'll go to polygon again. It'll ask you for the number of sides. I'll give eight. Now the center of the polygon is this particular point which you can access by activating the node option in OSNAP menu. So click on OSNAP, then click on node. Okay, then I'll click here. So that is the center. Now software is asking whether you want that polygon to be circumscribed or inscribed. In this figure, a dimension related with an octagon is given. That is octagon three across means a width across the flat side in this octagon is three units. So you can assume a circle with a diameter of three units inscribed or within this octagon. Or else you can say this octagon is circumscribed about a circle with a diameter of three units. So let's make use of this information. So I should choose circumscribed. Now it will ask you for the radius. Radius is 1.5 since the diameter is three. Now the octagon is created. Next, I'll draw the square. So I'll give polygon again. Now it will ask you for the number of sides. So I'll give an enter since that is the default. Now it will ask you for the center of the polygon, which is this center. Just click that node. Now you should specify the polygon is to be circumscribed or inscribed. So I want the polygon to be circumscribed. You know why? The dimension of the square is given as 1.38. So you can imagine a circle with a diameter of 1.38 inside the square or inscribed in the square or else this square is circumscribed about a circle with the diameter of 1.38. So when I'm asked to give the radius, I should give half of 1.38. You can use the command prompt of AutoCAD as a calculator. So I'll start with a parenthesis followed by a forward slash which represents the divisional operator. For multiplication, it is asterisk and for addition it is plus sign. So likewise you can uh, choose a particular desired operator. Now you have to give the first argument which is nothing but the numerator. It is 1.38. Next you have to put a space then you have to give a denominator. So it's 2.0. That is the second argument. It is actually 1.38 divided by 2.0. Now you have to close the parenthesis and just give an enter. So the result of that particular expression is taken as the radius value. Next, you have to rotate this polygon. So I'll click on rotate command, select the polygon, then choose this as a base point or pivot point of rotation and give a rotation angle of 45 degrees. 
Next, we have to create this uh, circles. So I'll go to circle command, a uh, center radius option. I'll create a circle right at this middle. And the radius of that circle is given as half of 0.5, which is 0.25. Okay. Next, I have to create this arc. So what I'll do is I'll create a circle and trim to create the arc. So radius of that circle is 0.54. So I'll go to circle center radius. This is the center and the radius is 0.54. Next, I need multiple copies of the same two circles along the circumference of a circle. Whenever you deal with such a situation, you can always go for an array command. I'll go for array classic. So I'll just give array. Then you will get classic here. I'll select the objects to be arrayed, these two circles. Then it'll ask you for the, whether you want rectangle or a polar. I'll go for polar array and center of the array is this point. Now rest of the values are here. Now I'll just go for a preview of it just to see it. Now just give OK to get the result. Now let's give trim command to remove unwanted areas from this figure. So I'll give trim. When I'm asked to select the cutting edges, I'll give an enter. Then I can select these objects to be trimmed using a crossing window like this. Even we don't need these lines which are within the circle. Then give an enter. Hence we have completed this figure. But the same figure can also be completed using other methods. For example, you can create the quarter portion of this figure. Then you can give mirror command to create the rest. But I'm going to try the concept of blocks in this figure to create it. Even to try out the concept of blocks, we need only quarter portion of it or one fourth of it. So let's retain only the quarter portion. So I'll just create two construction lines. Then I'll go for trim. Then I'll remove all those areas. Then I'll erase these objects because they are independent objects. Even these construction lines are no longer required. This is just a quarter portion of it. Next, I'll go for block. So go to insert tab, then go to create block and uh, click on create block option. Or else you can type the letter BL for block. Then I'll give a block name as part. You can give any name. The base point I'll define on this node. When I master select the objects, I'll select all these objects. Now I'll click on convert to block to convert those objects into a block. Okay, so this is a single object or a block. Next, I'll insert the same block by clicking on the insert tab and go to insert command and I'll go for more options. Okay, or else you can give insert command. Here, I'll give the rotation angle as 90 because I need a rotated version of the same block. And you can choose this node as the base point. This is a rotated version. I'll repeat the insert command again by giving an enter. Then this time the rotation angle is 180 degrees. Okay, so you have got another rotated version of it and this is the insertion point. Then I'll give rotation angle of 270. And you will get another rotated version of it. Hence, you can complete this figure. So this is how you make use of the concept of blocks to complete the same figure. But in this case, it is made up of just four paths. Okay. Hope this tutorial has given you some insights related with two-dimensional drafting using certain drawing commands and editing commands. We have also seen how the concept of blocks can be used to complete such a figure. Hope you liked this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for your time.